So it's been a full year since I've been using the Galaxy S10 Plus. Now we know that the S20 line is coming up. There's a lot of, you know, just hype about it, but let's let's take it back a little bit. Let's look at the S10 Plus because this thing it has been a game changer. Now, I know 2019 had so many devices and the S10 Plus was, lo was looked uh, over by a lot of people. And I have to say, coming back to 2020, beginning of this year, this is a prime device to pick up. And the reason is because, yes, the pricing is much better. It's about 749 brand new. You can get it cheaper, you know, 550 or something, maybe 600, uh, you know, if you're buying it used. But it packs in so much and Samsung has done the work to keep this device relevant. So the very first thing is that, look, it's running One UI 2.0. Uh, on Android 10. All those updates are out there, you've seen videos. So for better detail on One UI 2.0, check out my buddy Jonathan Casey's video for that. Uh, but it runs really smooth. And you know, you can see it's running Android 10. Uh, you've got all those Android 10 features, the gestures, those little things that make it feel good and snappy. And it does feel snappy with that too. You've got dark mode, all the things you want. That's the same software we'll be running on the uh, S20 and S20 Plus, S20 Ultra. So you're not missing much there, right? Except maybe for direct hardware feature uh, differences. This is one of the best devices for me to hold and use and navigate. It feels very light, you're holding it in your hands, doesn't feel like you're having carrying something too heavy. And it's very easy to just kind of swipe through and move around. You've got big hands like me, you're gonna love that 6.4 inch display. And boy, does that display look vibrant sharp, it's really good. Uh, I think only the Note 10 display to me beats out the display that Samsung has to offer right here. Now, you're going, what did you use this device day to day? What was my use case scenario? And the first thing I'll say is gaming, right? Uh, I do a lot of gaming videos, I'm a gamer. Uh, it's powered by the Snapdragon 855, which is no slouch, and yes, we know the S20 will have the Snapdragon 865 processor, which has a much better performance, but 855 does the job quite well. Handling any of the games, whether it was PUBG playing on there, or playing, um, you know, Call of Duty, uh, you know, mobile, which everybody loves to play, this thing, does a really good job, but it's also the flexibility of gaming I do like with this device. One of my very favorite controllers last year was, and still is the Razer Jungle Cat, waiting for that Kishi to come out. Uh, and the Jungle Card is so versatile because it does come with a case for the S10 Plus. I can slide in those Joy-Con controllers and I have a mini Xbox with me to go. That to me is great. The fact that I can play my Android games, I can log into my xCloud and play that as well, and it gives me full functionality. I mean, like, that's awesome. So the funny thing that most people don't know is that it's been my de facto gaming smartphone for last year. Yes, I love the ROG phone and that was cool, but just having that ability with it to me had been so easy and so good that this had been my de facto. Anytime I've done a video about xCloud, I use my Galaxy S10 Plus, right? That for me has just been the main thing. So that aspect works really well. The other thing too is it's got a headphone jack. And that's something that literally only LG has kept. Even Samsung has walked away from it. So you want a Samsung phone that has a headphone jack, that's the one phone that has it. Plus it has an SD card slot too. So you've got that as with added storage. So, you know, when I'm testing out these brand new headphones from AI, 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 uh, which I might do a video for, I might do something uh, as a roundup, uh, really good headphones, but you need something to drive it. 32-bit audio through the headphone jack. It's rare. I mean, it's dime a dozen, and this is one of the few devices that are good. Not just the, the cheaper devices I have headphone jack, like, of course, the Pixel 3a, but a good device that actually can do a lot of things that has a headphone jack. I think it's just something to not walk away from. Now, Photography is another thing that comes to mind. You know, that's one of the things a lot of people use their smartphones for because we don't buy cameras anymore or point and shoots for that kind of purpose. Photography has been good. I mean, the S10 Plus has still one of the best wide angle cameras out there. Now, in other aspects, though, it's not going to compare to, say, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which in terms of video does really, really well. Trust me, the S10 Plus is no slouch. You've got steady shot, which I love, I love to use, works out really well, but the, you know, but it's low life photography is not as good as some of those guys. And I would admit with you too, it's gotten a little bit better. You know, the scene detection has gotten better, 
but it's not the same. And maybe that's where the S20 Lite comes up and gives us something more. We do know the S20 Plus will have a bigger display, 6.7 inches. We'll have a new camera setup with two 12 megapixel sensors, the main sensor 12 megapixels, but with a bigger micro, micro in size, while the telephoto will be 64 megapixels. Now, if you move over to the Ultra, the big boy, that has the 108 megapixel uh, main sensor, which would be insane, plus a 48 megapixel um, uh, telescopic lens and give you up to 100x zoom. I mean, that's like nuts, absolutely nuts. So those kind of things make this device feel uh, a little different, right? And going S20 might give us a lot more, but look back. Let's look at some of the images that the S10 Plus actually can give. And it does a really good job. And that's the thing you have to look at. You gotta look at the images, look at what they produce and you go like, you know what? It's good for me. It works well. I'm not saying you have to settle, I'm just saying that, look, if the cost benefit is there, we don't know how much the S20 will be priced at, and that sounds like a beast, but this device here is about 749 right now, and it's gonna give you this kind of imagery, this kind of photos, um, and also some really good video with stuff like you know, steady shot. So I think those things come into play. Now, battery life is the last aspect I really wanna talk about because the S10 line has really carried this new um, battery legacy for Samsung. The Note 10 also has been really good with batteries. The S10 Plus started off with its 4100 milliamp battery, which back then, when I first got it last February, basically gave me a, a full day's worth of juice. Now, in 2020, late January, it's still giving me a full you know, day, day's work of juice because battery optimization has been good. The software updates with Android 10 and One UI 2.0 have been great. The ability to actually get that into a device has been so good, it makes so much more sense. And it feels really fresh. Trust me, navigating through this thing is really good. Plus you've got all those little additives where you've got reverse wireless charging. It's built into it. You can recharge your Galaxy Buds, whatever device you want to recharge, you know, might take a little bit of time, but it packs all the things you're looking for. There's a lot to say about the uh, S10 Plus. I really like it. I think it's something you can pick up right now. I mean, there's some things that I don't like. I don't like the fact, and again, this is probably for all smartphones last year, you get a lot of micro scratches on Gorilla Glass 6. So. That's more of a Gorilla Glass 6 thing. Um, and I also uh, wish that, you know, the photography was much better, especially in low light. But I think overall though, if you're thinking, do I want to spend much more money on that S20 Ultra or even the S20 Plus? Again, we don't know how much. Or do I just save some, get myself either brand new S10 Plus or use S10 Plus? I think getting the use S10 Plus makes a lot of sense. I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't think you have to spend too much. I think Samsung has delivered something that has lasted more than a year and a couple more years to come that you will go, I like my phone. I think it's really solid. So there you have it. If you agree with me about the S10 Plus being a value today right now, uh, let me know. Leave your thoughts up down below. If you disagree, I want to hear your thoughts as well. Thank you very much, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.